Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do the screen replacement on an Asus Zenfone 4. Here's the tools that you'll need. A heat gun, a metal spudger, a plastic spudger, some tweezers, a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, some double-sided adhesive, as well as a few cards and a razor blade. So this is what the part should look like. So the first thing you'll want to do is remove the SIM card and then you can start heating up the back. Then grab your razor blade and work your way along the sides until you can open it up a bit like this and then slowly slide the razor blade along the edges where the adhesive is. You don't want to go too deep because you can actually cut antenna wires or the battery. And then you'll grab your pick and start working your way along the sides that you've already opened up just so that they don't re-adhere down. And then you'll want to reheat it every once in a while, make sure that it's staying a bit hot, not too hot as you'll fry the motherboard. So then you'll work in your razor blade along the sides and just cut all the adhesive. So now you can grab a playing card or a business card and just work your way along the bottom. So you're going to want to heat it up every now and then, again, just to keep it warm so that it doesn't re-adhere down and also so that you don't crack the glass by trying to break the adhesive. So now that you've got it loosened up enough to remove the glass, we're going to take the back glass off. So we're going to remove all 15 screws here with the Phillips screwdriver. Some of these screws are different sizes, so you will want to lay them out in a little pattern or on a little mat so that you remember to put them back in their proper places. So once you've got those 15 removed, you're going to want to go down to the bottom and start removing the 8 Phillips screws down there. Again, you'll want to lay these down in order so that you remember where to put them afterwards. So now that we've removed all the screws, we can safely remove the upper motherboard plate and the lower plate holding the charge port in place. And now we're going to disconnect our battery, our charge port, and our LCD ribbon with our plastic spudger. Gently disconnect the cellular antenna wires, the side volume and power buttons. Disconnect the back facing cameras. Take out the one Phillips screw that is holding down the motherboard and take your little flathead screwdriver to start releasing the adhesive for the vibrate motor. Now we can grab the plastic spudger and start prying our way under the motherboard to release it. Now we're going to go down and remove the charge port. Grab the plastic spudger and disconnect the cellular antenna. And then you'll want to use the plastic spudger to pry underneath the charge port to release it from the adhesive. Grab the tweezers and we're going to try to pull out the little adhesive strips that are holding the battery down, but they always break. So I had to use a razor blade to pry it up as well as my plastic spudger. Just be super careful not to pierce the battery because it can catch fire. Pull the LCD ribbon away from the adhesive as well as the little digitizer ribbon. 
And now we can remove the screen. We'll just have to grab our heat gun and heat up the edges. When the glass is just a little too hot to touch, you can grab your razor blade and start working it along the bottom where the home button is. And slowly work your way around the edges with the razor blade. Once you've got enough of the adhesive and the LCD released, you can actually start lifting from the bottom of the screen. And just grab your heat gun and keep the top area warm where it's still adhered. Pull out the LCD and digitizer ribbon. Slowly and gently work the screen out. I got a little frustrated at the end and just kind of pulled it and shattered a bunch of glass with it, which is whatever, you can do that too. It's really not a big deal. The screen was already broken. Then you're just going to want to take your metal spudger and scrape away any excess glass and any of the excess adhesive that was left behind. You want to make it perfectly smooth around the edges of the frame so that the LCD will fit perfectly. So now we'll take our new LCD and we'll start putting the double-sided adhesive on it because the part that I got does not come with any. So just make sure when you're doing the adhesive near the top not to put any around the camera hole or the ear speaker hole because that will get in the way of the camera and the speaker. After you've removed all the protective plastic from the double-sided adhesive, we can grab the LCD and start installing it into the frame. So you'll want to push the LCD ribbon as well as the small digitizer ribbon through the corresponding holes in the frame. Once everything's lined up and there's no ribbons that are being pinched by the frame, we can start pushing the glass against the frame. Now we're going to be reinstalling everything. We'll start with the charge port. We'll push that in and connect the charge port ribbon that goes to the motherboard. Then we'll want to connect the, the small digitizer connection and we are going to reconnect the two cellular antenna wires. The white one will go on the far right and the black one will go a little bit above it. So now we can grab our motherboard, just move all the connections out of the way so that the motherboard can fit perfectly into place. Push the front facing camera down and then we can put the one Phillips screw that's holding the motherboard in place. Connect the power button, connect both of the back facing cameras as well as the charge port ribbon and both of the cellular antenna wires. The white one goes on the right, and the black one will go on the left. Peel off the plastic on the back of the LCD ribbon so that we can put the ribbon into place. Connect it, and then slowly work your way up until it has a nice fold right where the motherboard starts. Try not to pinch it too hard. Now we're going to grab our battery and connect it to the motherboard. So turn it on and always test the screen. And once you know it's all working, you can put it back together. So we'll start with the lower plastic plate holding down the charge port. So put in the eight Phillips screws. Make sure everything is connected at the top and then we can start putting the motherboard plate down. 
Grab your screwdriver and start screwing the 15 Phillips screws back in place. So the last step is just putting the glass back on. You may need some double-sided adhesive for yours, but mine seem to stick perfectly fine. And that's it. Thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye.